Uh, coach, in the second half, the team, I think at one point, was down by just 13. Um, I think we cut it to 10. 10, that's right. Almost <laughs> single digits in the second half. And uh, so just talk about what you felt about your team's performance, and especially in the second half when they closed it to 10. Uh, you know, we, we stressed to our guys in the in the locker room at halftime that, that we're better than the performance we put on the floor in the first half. And, you know, we felt like we wanted to come out there and compete. And, and you know, we knew it was going to be uh, almost an impossible task to come from 22 down and win on the road against a, a program like University of Miami defending ACC champions. You know, uh, even though they lost a lot of players off last year's team, they got a lot of guys on that bench to take pride in the fact that they are the defending champions. And I think they're going to have a heck of a program again this year. They'll do very well. Um, so we told our guys, look, the second half goal is to go out there and one possession at a time try to cut the lead. You know, at the first uh, media timeout, see if we can turn a 22-point game into a 16-point game. At the second media timeout, can we turn a 16-point game into a 12-point game and, and so forth. And, you know, I was really proud that we did that. We didn't quit. We actually played better defense in the second half. We, we defended better, and I thought we executed a lot better. And, uh, you know, we got Chris Carter going in the second half, and, you know, he's a great player. And, you know, we knew he wasn't going to be that bad the entire game. And he just got off to a very bad start. Uh, but played a lot better in the second half. And Corbin Jackson uh, as well had a big second half for us. Um, but, you know, he's that kind of player. And, you know, he was sick as a dog today. Last couple of days, that's why he didn't start. And we weren't sure he was going to be able to play at all. And then I looked down and he gives us 19 minutes and 12 points and, and as sick as he was. Uh, I'm very proud of those two guys and how they played. And I thought uh, Cameron Stahl played really well for us tonight. Uh, you know, tough for him going against some of those the size that UM has inside, but I thought Cameron did a good job there. And uh, uh, Jermaine Jackson, you know, did okay. He's a better player than what he showed tonight as well. Uh, but we didn't quit. You know, our guys hung in there and they fought hard. And, you know, I thought that Miami really killed us on the boards. You know, the two areas that they were dominant in the game, they dominated on the boards, you know, with their size and their length. Uh, and the other area, they shot the ball very, very well. We were three for 22 behind the arc. They were 11 for 26, and, and that's a huge difference in the ball game. And, and then we're a team that prides ourselves on being aggressive. We like to get to the bucket. We like to draw fouls. You know, we led our conference last year in free throw attempts. Uh, that's one of our goals every game. You know, we go out there. We told the guys tonight for us to win this game, we had to shoot 30 free throws. In the end, UM shot 26 free throws, and we shot seven. Uh, and, and that, you know, those three, the, the three big differences in the game, how well UM shot it from the outside, how well they rebounded, and the discrepancy in the free throw attempts. Those are the three big differences in the ball game. Uh, the other area I was really proud of our team, you know, against the defending ACC champions on their floor, we didn't turn the ball over. We only had 12 turnovers in the game, and UM had 12 turnovers as well. So I was really worried coming into the game as to how well we'd handle their size and their athleticism and their pressure. And I thought if we turned the ball over a lot, you know, we, we couldn't make keep it a ball game. And, we didn't turn the ball over, so I was proud of our guards in, in that respect. Um, and, you know, like I said, we, we came in hoping that we would compete in the second half, and I think we did. Coach, it was a tail two halves. You shot 47% in the second half. Started off 23%. Carter scored 17 of 20 of his 20 points in the second half. Um, <clears> like you said, it seemed like you got six unanswered points and second chance points. You see Miami finish with 25. FIT finished with six. Yeah. I mean, they, they destroyed us on the boards. But, you know, it, it, throughout the year, we won't play a bigger team any time. That, that's a big basketball team. I mean, both of them, their two guard is 6'6", six, six, their wing is 6'6", six, six, then they're 6'9", six, 7' seven foot inside. You know, our two biggest players are 6'9". Uh, and in Division two basketball, you know, night in and night out, that's what you're going to see. Um, so we're not going to face that kind of size again this year. But I thought we battled. I mean, our guys were strong and tough and tried to battle. Um, you know, as I said, they dominated us on the boards. And then the two guys I thought that really hurt us, uh, Garius Adams and, and, and Ryan Brown, both of those guys just shot it so well. And at the half, those two guys really hurt us. Uh, I thought we did a better job on both of those guys in the second half. Um, and again, like I said, Chris Carter, is, he's an All-American in my book. You know, I think... He's one of the best guards in our conference, one of the best guards in the region. You know, he's a Division I transfer from Air Force. He's played on this big stage against these teams many times already in his career. And he wasn't going to be that bad all night long. And I think Chris came out as a, you know, a, a very motivated player in the second half. And you saw a much better Chris Carter. When Chris is good, we're good.
Thank you, Coach. My pleasure. Thank you. Good luck to you and the rest of the season.